here. We are coming Hello. from a distance because, well. It's Mercury Retrograde. Fuck me. Well done, Mercury Retrograde. Yes. Thanks, boo. Um, we're going to do our thing anyway, and we're going to, you know, Mercury's taking a detour. We're going to take a detour, too, and we're still going to get there. Can't get us down, right? We're like... Absolutely not. Can't stop it. Absolutely not. So here we are. So sure. welcome, everyone, to the Chronicles of Chiron, the Lion, the Witch, and the Healer. I'm Christopher, Astro Medium. This is Jessica. Introduce yourself. I'm Jessica Tanzel. I am a psychic medium, a spiritual teacher, and a healer. And I'm so glad to be here for the Chronicles tonight. I missed last week. Yes, that's okay. It wasn't meant to be, maybe, you know. Now Mercury's retrograde fucking with us, and we are going to fuck with it back. So we've got a lot of stuff. Uh, to talk about tonight. You and I are just going to shoot the shit a little bit, but I do just want to say that Venus is heavily active this week. She is um, making her rounds. Venus opposite Neptune yesterday. Venus trying Jupiter today. Moon trying Venus tomorrow. Venus trying Pluto on Wednesday. Venus square the North Node on Wednesday. Venus trying Saturn on Saturday. I'm this week, it's all about relationships. It's all about our values and money. So it's a lot of attracting money this week as well. But Mercury, yes, is still in retrograde. But the sun will be going into Scorpio on Friday. Mm. So we've got some shifts happening as well, some energy shifts. How are you feeling with all this going on? You know, I've been feeling pretty good. I've noticed an achiness like in my body a little bit. Just like when you say achiness, what do you mean? Tenderness, like muscle tenderness, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. and that is an ascension my, symptom that's happening right now. Mostly in my heart chakra area. Like I'm very aware of this area and I haven't done anything to mm -hmm. like overdo that area of my body. Right. So very right. interesting there. Thank you, heavens, that the headaches let up for, you know, at least the recent time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, today was pretty good. Yesterday was okay. Um, a few days ago, I was getting some, some weird head stuff going on, but that's not really something that's happening right now. This stuff is changing so rapidly, and it, there's so many different factors that I want to talk about. There's a few different things I want to talk about tonight, and I want you to keep me on track because Mercury is retrograde. My Mercury is in Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So I'm going to be all over the place, okay? But they are wanting me to talk about um, the election and um, checking out of the matrix. Yes. Okay? During this time, we want to talk about that. Um, being, being on the ascension path during a time like this and also... Um, Oh, shit, as soon as I said that, some people are coming in. That's, I promise you, I'm not going to do that. But they just waved away my train of thought. So um, I will be all over the place, but we need to talk about that. And we also need to talk about um, a few different ascension symptom type things that are going on. If you don't mind, if we started ascension symptoms, and you go wherever you want, and I'll try to keep you on track. I wrote down the matrix and the ascension, but last week when I met <laughs> The matrix. <laughs> um, last week when I missed, you know, that weekend, I can't remember the exact day, that doesn't matter, but we had talked about there being a lot of nausea and a lot of head pain. I had a migraine so weird, I say so fierce, I say migraine, but nothing touched it, so I knew, but I was like uh, uh. sick from the pain, What you know, in my yeah. head, my human's mind says, this is a migraine. You can't get rid of it. And you're sick from the pain. And I knew it was ascension. And then I think it was that morning that you had sent me something about nausea. And I was like, no shit. I'm like, it is fierce. I yeah. had to clean out my trash can. I was gross. Wow. Yeah. That, hey, that just means that you're purging, literally. But there's a lot of purging going on right now in, in the collective. So there's lots of clearing happening. And there's a few different um, factors that I've been really looking into. And something you and I should probably stay more um, cognizant of as it's happening is the Schumann resonance. So 
this is the electromagnetic frequency or this is the you could call it the energy of Gaia or Mother Earth so the Schumann resonance um, was found to resonate um, at the same hertz or frequency as our alpha brainwave state which is a light meditative state when we go into a light meditative when we're not super deep in there when in a light meditative state it's an alpha and the Schumann resonance stayed at around seven hertz for thousands of years and now it will spike up to 60 to 70 hertz wow. okay did you all hear me seven 60 to 70 okay and when these um spikes happen there are uh, because we exist on the planet we're made of the planet so you've heard me talking about solar flares in these videos before we've talked about the whole kundalini rising that whole phenomena um chakra openings all of these are at play resonance also has something to do with this and i've done a lot of research on how that correlates because that should be affecting everybody and it is affecting everybody in a certain way but for those of us who are who are already reaching certain frequencies or who have open to certain energies what it does is it causes the water levels in our body to vibrate at that frequency. And if, you, the, if you're vibrating with that type of frequency, which is much higher than it w was normally, everything in your body that doesn't match those frequencies is going to come up. Um, just like the i did a lot of research on pandemics and how there is a correlation between um, certain outbreaks of viruses and things like that and 5g and 4g and that 5g was being installed this year but yeah and i'm i i wondered why that was and that's because these different frequency ranges cause different physiological and biological changes but um so the schumann resonance has a lot to do with the with a lot of physical symptoms going on. And then you have solar flares, which are bringing in more light frequency or light codes. This yep. is all upgrading the DNA and everything. So go ahead. No, what I find interesting is that I just read about this this morning and I'm cracking up inside. I'm like, if spirit is not speaking and aligning- What did you read about this morning? about the schumann resonance and the that earth. is hilarious crazy is that this book was probably written in the past couple of years i'll, I'll mm -hmm. check it out and give you that info but it talks about the uh hertz being 7.83 up to 7.83 yes so it's like totally spiking from so this book was written in the past couple of years and now we're seeing that it's spiking to 60 and also yes. like my, my body is like it vibrates that that's another ascension symptom is body vibrations the tingling the the humming in the body but we do need to be mindful that there's a lot of different things happening um there are people who are ascending who have not experienced a kundalini rising mm -hmm. okay so if you experience kundalini rising especially spontaneous kundalini rising there are a lot of symptoms that come with that and that is part of the ascension process as well kundalini is always rising but it's about how quickly or if it is awakened if you will so there's a, a lot we could go into about that but that is so crazy that you were just reading about that because that's a lot of times when pure intentions 555 on Instagram when she posts a lot of her updates you'll see that that really strange background that's Schumann resonance is what she's screenshotting because that's um, you know that's a lot of what those symptoms are coming from but that allows a lot of things to clear and there's a lot of there's a lot of differing opinions on why the earth's Schumann resonance why the earth's resonance and frequency is spiking like that a lot of people say it's lightning because you know the scientists are going to keep it very 3d and very physical but um you could almost say earth is ascending as well 
I mean, that's when I tune into that, if I think about that, I think that's where my mind automatically goes is the earth is ascending. We're all ascending. The earth is also ascending. Yes. So yes. thank you for saying that because I think that's just what I assumed was that mm -hmm. those facts were from the ascension. Mm -hmm. And it's important right now as well with what's going on in the country um, and in the world that while we're yeah as we're experiencing a lot of these things you know part of my awakening and kundalini rising is that it made me more empathic there were th i look back and go oh i always was psychic i always was sensitive i always was i always was but not like i am now so i do know that there was a shift that happened and it there was um really nothing I could do about it. But in that case, if you are an empath or um, someone who's more sensitive, you may also be picking up on a lot of collective fear and collective um, trauma and collective anger right now because Mars is in Aries. So there's a lot of frustration and anger out there. So yeah, and that's going to cause your own psychological and mental and emotional ups and downs because that's happening as well thank you for saying that like okay if i'm honest like i stay so out of the news like i me too don't tune in i'm aware me neither. If I'm honest i might do a quick facebook scroll of the news which isn't the best form of the news probably my bad but i right awareness and i stay far me away too. from that however and I was to say, last week I was real tuned into the fear of money and a couple of people that I'm close with also were. That shit is not cool. Come on, come on. I had to reel it in, but I definitely released it through some tears. I was like, what the hell is this? So mm -hmm. when you say fear of money, you mean lack or fear of having too much? No, it felt like lack, and I don't sit in a place, a, a, a place of lack often. Right, you never right. But, so it was weird because it just came up so fierce, but I mean. Well, but see, it, it's, whether we're ascending or not, the fact that you were in a witness state and you looked at it as something that was coming up that you could observe and you could process and you could release and let go of and didn't stay there because, well, but where's the money going to come from and how am I going to do this and where am I going to do that? And this is real life and I need to stay in this mode. That's what, that's what this whole process is about is, yeah. is we're totally allowed to feel those things, but we also, that observer has to come in, that higher perspective comes in and allows you to release that. And, and you know what? We've got to feel some of those things to get them out, even if it's old or if it's new or if it's collective, like feel it, get it out. That's what we're talking yes. about here. Like we're yes. experiencing things that could be now, could be old, could be. Well, and it is now. It's all happening in a now, but it's probably being reactivated by something else right, right. um Correct. you could you may have a lack or a fear of poverty or um that lack consciousness in your dna i actually i'm gonna say 100 percent that you do we all most of us do right so um but that's and it goes all the way down to that root absolutely stability support. that's your fear of survival right yeah. so so, it, I mean, this is, this is going all the way down to that tiniest particle of us. I feel guided to ask you about the astrology around the election because we are going to talk about that. Okay. So, um, <sighs> <laughs> so the sun is going to enter Scorpio. The sun is always in Scorpio on, um, election day but around the election we'll also have venus still in retrograde but it will be in libra at the time so it will have made its way back to libra okay. um did i say venus or mercury you said venus fuck 
Mercury will be in Libra. Okay, Mercury will be in Libra. Will still be retrograde. <laughs> like, okay, but, um, and if I'm not mistaken at that time, I'd have to check, but Venus may have entered Libra as well. Um, but it's also interesting to note that Mercury will go direct on the day of the election. Okay, so it will station direct and begin to move forward again. And then Mercury will enter its retro shade or shadow period. Um, it, a shadow period is where the planet that has stationed direct or was once retrograde has to retrace its steps and get back to where it was when it started to go backwards. Okay, like currently right now we're in Jupiter retro shade, Saturn retro shade, Pluto retro shade. Um, they're in their shadow periods and their, their shadow periods are going to be very long. But Mars will station direct on November 13th and Mercury will exit its shadow period on November 13th. And then Mars will enter its retro shade. So we've got uh, all of these shifts and this timing around there. Having Mars in retrograde, uh, Mercury in retrograde, basically on the election. This is um, and Chiron in retrograde as well, because Chiron is in Aries in retrograde. There's a this is a tumultuous time, but the election. So we need to be mindful that oh interesting so we should um i'm being guided to say that if those of us who are more conscious of what's going on i don't know what that means so um i just heard that the election is not going to play out the way mm -hmm. we think it will mm -hmm. or that there's it's going to be <sighs> something crazy is going to happen or something and also i am seeing like groups of people getting together and not just meditating but specifically checking out of the election experience and staying in a more higher frequency or a positive frequency holding a space for everyone else who's still playing the game if you will um like let's say you and me and a hundred thousand other light workers empaths star seeds what spiritual people enlightened people you know i'm not trying to sound elitist but um the people who can check out of there because their emotions aren't holding them there and i'm not saying we're better because of that i'm saying we are where we are so if we can hold that space and maintain a stronger vibration, the collective pull downward that could happen may not go that way. So also it's important to know in astrology, let, let's take um, today for instance. Today, Mars is squaring Jupiter and Mercury is opposing Uranus. These are very, very in your face energies, especially Mars square Jupiter. I don't know if you've um, felt this, but not just a lot of sexual energy, but more so wanting to get so much done really fast um, and wanting to be a little impulsive, wanting to do, and this was, has been building up in the past few days as well, feeling a little bit impulsive, um, feeling like um, you just wanna get things done and and do it quickly and there's some rashness to that and also with mercury opposite uranus there's even more communication issues happening but venus is also trining jupiter but that energy is a higher frequency so to have these frequencies all happening zero degrees on the same day you wouldn't have to purposefully tune to the venus trine jupiter energy to pull that in because just like gravity we're more apt to pull in the more dense or slower moving vibrations which a square is more tension mars is definitely more of that sexual physical energy where venus is more of the heart and jupiter is more of the higher mind so you've got to pull that energy in so even on that day no matter what happens 
there can there's still energy that can be tuned to that's coming in I wonder if we could um, <clears throat> we could talk about how to gather that for ourselves and our groups for you know putting together a meditation or something that night but I wonder if like listening to a certain hurts uh, during that time would be helpful for some to feel like they're keeping that vibration. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, I, that is helpful. Um, I also just saw singing bowls and other things like that to help tune in. Um, wrote drum. But, and I have, they showed yeah, me or, the singing bowl to my sound bowl. Yeah. Yes, so and, and that's something that can definitely help just to, to keep the tune going. But really, what they're showing me is there doesn't need to be this um, yogic practice or this deep meditative anything. There's almost this um, checking out and enjoying life even on that day because that will hold a, let's say millions of people begin to vibrate in denser emotions, if we maintain that emotion up here, the whole will not plummet as deep. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, whatever we're doing, if we're doing what makes us happy at that time, and I'm yes. people like, do what makes you happy, happy, and if it doesn't make you happy, it's time to make a change, but if you're doing what makes you happy, you're holding a high vibration. Yes, and that, that is not the day I'm getting that is not the day to be purging and clearing and trying to process something emotionally. We can look at it if we want to be called light workers, we can, um, because everyone is a light worker, in my opinion. People who are conscious of their creating abilities are more apt to focus their energies in this way. What does that mean? At a specific point, I understand. So we all have a collective intention and that intention will create its own reality. Sorry, this is weird. <laughs> so um, so it, it will create its own reality. And it's okay to be creative that day. And it's okay to not feel bad when others want to pull you into that. Um, misery loves company, but we're, we're more so, um, I, I can see where these people are coming from who want other people to care as much, but they're, it's ego, it's ego, it's ego. So they're wanting people to care as much. And I totally understand. I don't want anyone to get shot. I don't want anyone to do without. I don't want anyone to lose their rights uh, based on their skin color or their sexual orientation. Of course not. That's not what we're saying at all. Um, but in my line of thinking, energy is faster moving than matter. So if we go into the energetic states, they look at us as tree hugging and woo woo and just um, just not wanting to do anything, just checking out because you don't have what it takes and you don't have a good heart. Well, maybe we just have a different understanding. And maybe, maybe if you all are down there doing the physical thing and we're up here bringing in the light frequencies and we are bringing them in onto the planet, because we all are, but if we're actively opening more of those portals by staying more in alignment, then you'll have more access to those higher vibrational ideals when you're out there physicalizing things. Absolutely. We are in the beginning of a huge shift and change in our consciousness. Like as a people, as a community, like we are going through, you know, all of what 2020 is and what it has held and it has shown up astrologically and we are getting ready to make a huge change. And it's been coming like I've known about it for a year. And here we are, and we're going to make that change. And we're being asked to step into our intuitive selves. We're being asked to spend time in nature, to slow down, to be with each other, to find happiness. And those are the things that are purging are the things that we don't 
that don't serve us. So this is that time to prepare for that, to really find yourself doing what makes you happy. And if it's not, this is the time to make that shift for you. Like do that, that you are your priority. Absolutely. And this is a, you know, Bashar, I like the way Bashar puts this. I, I do want to come back to the what I'm seeing right now. But um, Bashar always says, you know, everything out there is meaningless. We attach meaning to it. So if you experience something that is what in our language we would call it negative, if we choose to withdraw a positive meaning from it, we will get a positive result. So the election can be a reminder of something that we don't want or something that we don't want to participate or something that we do want. We want this, whatever it is, it gives, but we have to understand, thank you. We have to understand that everyone in the world even, but definitely in this country will have a focal point. They're showing it to me like rays of light coming into a prism or something like this. And kind of like what's happening over here, whatever this is over here. Um, <laughs> but, that magic light. Yeah, they will, they're, they're all going to tune to a similar frequency, literally, through the media as well. But we can create our own. Okay, I do believe that there are people already gathering. Somebody is touching my arm. I do believe that there are people, some, um, that there are people already gathering, there are people who are already doing this. If we want to go online and look this sort of thing up, there are, oh my God, there are people who are planning events or planning um, certain like global meditations or something like this, where there is a, not a very specific frequency range, just a, a specific state of being that you hold during that day in that time, in that general time. This is gonna be the week leading up to it and definitely the week after. Um, again, if we wanna call ourselves light workers, this would be the work to be done. Mm -hmm. And I am also seeing a, it looks like a religious statue. Um, someone is showing me it looks like it's either an angel and i don't know if that's what i'm communicating with or it looks like but it looks like a concrete or stone statue um it's very statuesque very tall white is the angel holding anything um i i'm immediately went to more of a sword because and i'm not saying it's archangel michael i'm just saying it looks almost medieval or renaissance or something you'd see at a church yeah i mean when you say sword that automatically takes me to archangel michael and there's no reason that he wouldn't step in like we're talking protection we're talking disconnecting and his sword will that would make sense like, this makes sense that he would show up interesting and this is he is the yeah i mean i I don't know why it's showing itself to me that way. It almost looks galactic too. Like, um, um, and I can't see here. I can only see like I'm zooming up. It's very specific. Um, so I don't know what that means, but as all this was coming in, that popped in like that. So, um, what yeah, I, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say what I just heard is there are several beings currently surrounding this topic, this conversation. I'm not saying just for us, but for many. Right. Same conversation, probably at the same time in a different group. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> not probably, really. Probably, yeah. We're all, there are many of us talking about this. So what I'm hearing is that you actually just connected to actually three different beings that just showed up. So I don't know who the third is. The second, it reminded me of like Ashtar. You know yeah, you've said that to me before, and that's what this kind of looks like, as if it's um, star being. a star being, but it looks like a Roman cat, like if you, if we went to Rome, those big, tall statues of, of something, but I'm seeing the clothing and the cloak yeah. on it, so, but it also looks and feels male, but with long hair. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know what Ashtar is, but that's... I think Ashtar does have long hair. What is that? Uh, a star being. I will, I, you know what, I don't have that information here with me because I feel like there's another name to it, if I'm honest. Like Ashtar is what my mind grabs, but I will, because I have it in one of my like Keepers of the Light card decks. Honestly, that's where I... Oh, I see. I see. So, so this is almost like a galactic yes. archangel, if you will. Well, I would, I, you know, I don't know Archangel Michael as a galactic like angel, but I can see where Ashtar being galactic and being like, yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's just what I saw. Y'all can do with it. There's no meaning. You can give the meaning to it. <laughs> so... But, yeah, but it, light, you know, it just makes so much sense, though. Yes, it, it does. And I also see blue, blue mist or blue orbs out of the corner of my eye. And those, those could be all kinds of things. I've, they could be Arcturian, Pleiadian. That could be Archangel Michael. I don't know. I've seen a really big one before. And very likely all of those, again, right now with what we're talking about. Like, it's very likely all of that because it is not... Like, here's the group of angels, and here's here, and here's here. It's like, everybody is like, please help. <laughs> well, and here's also something I want to mention now that we're on that this kind of topic. Um, but the other night, I, I was driving home, and, sometimes, and the ascension symptoms, a lot of it is emotional, and it's a lot of emotional ups and downs. You'll feel fine, and then all of a sudden, you just won't feel good anymore. Yeah, and it's like, so I've been doing a lot of crying. Probably five to six days out of the week, I've been crying at least once during the day. And I always feel better after it always, you know, sometimes I have to really get myself into it. But I was crying on the way home, and it wasn't like a heavy one, but I, I definitely felt like it needed to happen, and it did. And then I get home, and I'm walking around here to the backyard, and I look up in the sky and I was like, whoa, this is the most, and of course it was like two in the morning. And this was the most clear that I had seen the sky in a long time. You could see the Big Dipper. You could, it just looked more like being out in the country looking up. And I looked up and I went, oh my God. And as soon as I did that, a shooting star went across. And that was after I had talked, I was like, please, please tell me that all this is leading somewhere. Sometimes when I get in those moments, you know, just because I am a psychic medium and I see orbs and I see prana and I uh, have ascension symptoms and they all match and the Kundalini rising, it does not mean that I don't still doubt and cry on my way home. Not just because there's something to get out, but something that helps me get it out is the thought of this not actually being anything and me just being a sad person. Hmm. that'll take me there right away <laughs> like or that where is this all leading to you know what what where is there ever a moment that comes where you feel like <sighs> that pimple's gone that pain is gone like right. it happens physically the healing's over with but where is this and it's not like this has been 20 years and I know that doesn't mean that it's not super intense for me and it doesn't mean that it and this has all just been going on a few years but holy shit but when i saw that shooting star i immediately was like okay i've seen a shooting star before exactly when i needed to and it's not like shooting stars are the most rare thing in the whole world but at that moment really I, it, I don't think they're flying around often. I haven't seen one in two years. And I had never seen a shooting star until after my Kundalini rising, until after my awakening. Um, when I was at Disney World, I was actually at Disney World. I quit my job at Dillard's. I went to Disney World and was going to move to Atlanta. And I was at Disney World. And right at Epcot, right as it went nighttime, I remember I picked something up off the ground and I looked up in a shooting star. And I was like, oh, did you all see that? And they were like, no. And I was like, oh, that was meant for me is what I thought. So then I just saw one the other night. So there's all these different, okay, we also need to get into the number frequencies. Have you been seeing the repeating numbers? Oh, yeah. A, a lot of people have, actually. And more, oh, more often. my yeah. God. So remember, um, 
I also went and of course looked up shooting stars, like what the spiritual meaning of shooting stars on my phone was just because sometimes you just need a little something. And there were a lot of articles on there going, shooting stars are a normal thing. And you, and um, if you think they're special, that's great, but it, it's not really anything special. It's just you trying to find meaning. And that just means something about you that you need to find meaning at this point in your life. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> who the fuck are you to say anything at this point? But um, so I was like, okay, I'm still going to believe in it. I'm going to choose to believe that was meaningful because we give meaning to everything. So, but also back in July before our journey, okay, I started seeing 333-444-777-888. And then we had our journey and I didn't really see it so much. And then in late September, that was in July. And then, of course, and then in early September, I started seeing it again. And now I see it all the time. It'll be on license plates. It'll be groups of 777 constantly. It, the time. I, okay, only because I'm, I'm kind of cuckoo about this shit. And I'm, I'm still just like, I'm so skeptical. I have to fight the skeptical side of myself. But um, you know my, my numbers are 7 and 13, so I always see 7 and 13 a lot. So I screenshot every time this shit happens, right? So, like, I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Yeah. But um, this was today when I, and I look at my phone at that time. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. and I promise you, I only screenshot it if I happen to look at the phone without, usually if I'm, and it'll be when I'm not thinking about anything. I'll be doing something and then I'll just go to reach my phone and see what time it is. I won't be expecting it at all. Trust me. Sometimes I sit, I'll be driving in my car crying, looking at every single license plate, <laughs> looking for a sign. And they're just like, well, you don't need to be reminded right now. You're there. You don't, I understand. Thank you. You don't need to be reminded when you're looking for it because you're already looking for it. So you're, you're knowing of it. It only happens when you need to be brought back out of the matrix a little bit. Mm -hmm. I love that. Ah, that was a good way to, because I always tell people like these synchronicities are, you know, definitely signs. I'm going to say from spirit, but that kind of encompasses like guides, angels, spirit, uh, past loved ones. But yes, it does take you, you're like, oh, my spiritual connections there. So it kind of puts you back in that vibe. I love that. That's a great viewpoint. Okay, yes. so I've, I wanted to I've been making lights go out a lot too. So, oh, sliding. You had mentioned that you wanted to come back to something you saw. Did you see come back to that? It was the it was the statue of the okay good galactic okay. angel. <laughs> like, I wanted to make sure we touched on that and the uh, came back to that. Yes. So really, I mean, that that's what's going on in my world. Um, I also enjoy like when you get into this journey and you start realizing like sometimes you sometimes you I'll be talking to someone and I'll just be looking at them and I'm just like, none of this is real. You just have a sensation that all of this is an illusion and none of this is real and that they're just a virtual projection and it's really a bizarre feeling when it happens and i'm just like ooh, my my ego is just like ooh, i don't like to almost dissociate like that in the middle of a conversation but that will happen sometimes who are you Why you're talking with them, I do want to check in if there were other things we wanted to talk about with the Ascension, like, I, <laughs> yes, of course, yeah, just, just so we say, because I see spirit like ready, but I want to check in on if we, I think we touched base on all these things. Yeah, been, that's been going on right now. And what I was getting to was <laughs> like, I have to find a new apartment and I absolutely several times would feel like myself getting stressed about it. And then me going, I always find a place. Something always works out. Something always, something that you're not expecting, which actually works out. 
So I just let it go for like the past week. I didn't look for apartments at all. And I'm like, it's October 20th. Oh my God. Look at the time. 10 20. 10. It's so it's, it's about as soon as I said October 20th, I looked at the time, which is 10 20. So I'm just saying shit like this is happening. Okay. But it's October 20th, right? Tomorrow. So I, I've only got 11 days to find this other place. And I just was like, whatever, something will happen. Something that's better will happen, you know, and almost just playing that game instead of buying into, you got to figure it out. And I get, if I had pets and kids and it would, I probably would be harder to do that, but it's so good to just say, let's see what life just throws in there. Let's see what happens. Let's see who it brings me. Let's wait to the last minute to see what kind of ideas pop into my head that's supposed to get. Because you do realize all of this is kind of a, a reality that's talking back at you. Oh, oh yeah, it's talking back at me. Literally, yeah. Friday night, we did pumpkin carving. Uh-huh. And friend, I guess I was, you know, here. And so- uh-huh. He was like, huh? Huh? And I was like, huh? Like, I apparently talk to spirit like half the time. I'm in a conversation here. Like, I don't even realize it sometimes. So I'm in La La Land. So like, they are talking though through all of this stuff. When you talk about that, that just makes me like, I connect with spirit and I connect. I'm like, wait, I don't have to lean into that worry or that stress. I mean, it happens. I'm human exactly i'm human we're all human it's gonna happen and i yeah. just like chris has said like even though we, we've gone through a lot of our spiritual awakening one that's not the end probably <laughs> like it's that just, is the beginning you know, it's the beginning exactly so we are still growing and experiencing along our way as well so it's so amazing the way spirit just does guide and talk you through so let spirit guide you if that means it's coming out of your mind and you're not sure if it's spirit or yourself does it make you happy is your gut right. go this way because my gut tells me things and i'm like i don't know if i want to do that but i'm following my gut i'm like okay i'm gonna listen the more we follow our gut we're following our intuition and we're guided to trust ourselves more and we're really right asked to trust ourselves and our intuition and our intuition yes. trying to tell us eat this drink that you want this and you notice how your diet's even changing like our food is what we want how much we're eating what we crave like yes my i've been eating very little and um you know sometimes i'll get hungry and eat a whole bunch but not like normal and i i can I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes I just won't have much of an appetite um, and it won't necessarily be related to the feelings of anxiety that will sometimes happen. Right. For about two weeks, I haven't really been hungry. I would forget to eat. Like, yeah. Oops. And so, and I would of course eat at night, but what I noticed last week, yeah, right, yeah. what uh, it may have been Tuesday or Wednesday, I was like, oh, I feel like I have my appetite back. That's exactly how I felt the past couple of days. It was like, oh, I actually want, you know, not that I didn't want to eat before. It was just like this, the feeling like last night, I was just eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. And we just got to go with it, you know? It's our bodies telling us what we need. In fact, I don't eat a lot of meat and I love rice. And my body's like, would you eat, get something? Like, get something that has a protein in it, please. I love, like, so, you know, and I, I, I am not a vegetarian or a vegan, but I don't eat a lot of meat because it's not what my body wants. My right, body right. Nah. Right. Yeah, you just got to go with it. And then, you know, if we do happen to, we got to keep forgiving ourselves too and, and, and cutting ourselves a little slack too. Well, we're, we're getting out of some patterns is what I'm being told. Like we get into this pattern of I'm going to, I'm going to get up, I'm going to eat, I'm going to go to work, and then I'm going to eat lunch, I'm going to get up and go to work, and then I'm going to come home, and I'm going to eat, and I'm going to do this TV thing, and I'm going to eat. Right, right. 
So we've trained ourselves that this is when you eat on this schedule, but your body doesn't always want it. And not to mention that we're trained to eat a specific way. This mm -hmm. full plate, clean your plate, and then make sure you have dessert. And don't forget that dinner is a four course meal. So we're right. trained a certain way and our bodies are trying to tell us that we don't really need that. But several people may still be finding themselves in that pattern. So mm -hmm. check out to see if you're pulling in a pattern and you're doing it because it's habit. Or are you being guided to change that? Like, just check in and be aware of that because they're telling me right now, like, that's something that we're finding shifting and some people might be kind of, I don't even like the word stuck, but just in a pattern and not aware that they're being pulled out of it. Yes, that's all that stuck is, is not awareness, you know? So. Anything else you want to talk about tonight? Not on here. Okay. <laughs> We're going to stop the record button <laughs> and we're going to shoot the shit. All right. <laughs> yes, we'll shoot the shit a little bit. Okay, so thank you everyone for tuning in to the Chronicles of Chiron, the Lion, the Witch, and the Healer. We will see you next week uh, for another round of shooting the shit with Jessica and Christopher. And um, that's all I got for tonight. Thanks for being here, you guys. We appreciate you and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.